Well, good morning. It's great to be together this morning. And whether you're with us in the room or joining us online this morning or at another date, you're very, very welcome. It's great to be together. So it's been a special weekend, hasn't it? And I wonder if you are a flag-waving royalist. I wonder if you've spent the whole weekend sat on your sofa, glued to the TV, watching all the events uh, unfold. I've got a few... um, pictures from the weekend there. I wonder if you've been excited by everything that's happened, or I wonder if you're feeling a little bit more like um, Prince Louis in the middle there uh, after the weekend of events, and we've still got more to go today. So whichever you're feeling about today, you can't deny that it's an historic weekend. The Queen has been Queen for longer, I think, than any of us in this room have been alive. Um, It's historic, and it's probably unique in the history of the UK. I wonder if anybody watched the concert last night. Did anybody see any of the, uh, the gig last night? Okay, there were lots of songs, weren't there? And right in the middle of the Bible, there is actually also a book of songs. They're called the Psalms. They're ancient songs. Um, and they're songs created for the community of believers as they gather together. They've been sung or said for thousands of years by groups of people. You'll find every human emotion there. They're like conversations with God. And if you've never looked into them, I really recommend that you have a look. One of the key themes in the Psalms, those songs, the one that we'll focus on today, is the celebration of a king. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. Come everyone, clap your hands. Shout to God with joyful praise, for the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King of the earth. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to God our King, sing praises. For God is the King over all the earth. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. Indeed, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Your throne, O Lord, has stood from time immemorial. You yourself are from the everlasting past. Mightier than the violent raging of the seas, mightier than the breakers on the shore, the Lord above is mightier than these. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over and the flock under his care. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the farthest coastlands be glad. You, O Lord, are supreme above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord is king. Let the nations tremble. Mighty king, lover of justice, you have established fairness. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow low before his feet, for he is holy. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundations on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the king of glory enter. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies, the Lord, 
of heaven's armies. He is the king of glory. I love the exuberance of those songs, that sense of celebration and majesty um, that these, this weekend's um, events can only just be a shadow of. Lots of those songs would have been used to call a people to worship. Like the one I just read, written by David himself, they would have been sung by the people as they made their way to meet with God. Maybe you've been part of a crowd, maybe on the way to a sporting event, maybe on the way to a gig, and I wonder if you have been a part of a crowd like that, you can picture the scene in which these psalms would have been sung aloud. Can you feel that excitement as you're part of being there, part of that crowd? That excitement of actually being there, the day has arrived, and the anticipation of what they were about to be part of. And for those people writing those psalms and saying those psalms, that anticipation was about being with God, about being in his presence. Now for that psalm that I read there, it's possible that as the crowd went up to be with God, that the priest said some of it, and then the people shouted some of it back. It's possible that the king himself cited some of the lines, recognizing that he himself was subject to a higher power. That's a refreshing attitude, I think, from a world leader. Uh, don't you? And it declares out loud two things which I think are really important for us to know. That all of this, the whole earth belongs to God. We've got in our lives, in our world today, individuals who may feel that they can lay claim to parts of the world, but ultimately the truth is spiritually, eternally, that it all belongs to God, which I think is reassuring. Secondly, that God is strong. That line, invincible in battle, might jar with us a little bit. There's nothing lovely about the battles that we see raging in the world at the moment. But there are things in our world which need fighting for. Nationally, worldwide, globally, and also actually in our lives. And maybe that idea, the idea of God as a fighter of battles, a fighter of your battles, is something for you to grab hold of this morning. Having in our mind that God is king, the king of kings, is really key, partly because that's who he is. And so I need to think a little bit about how how I am with him. Let's be honest, if the Queen walked in here this morning, we probably wouldn't just say there's coffee at the back, help yourself to biscuits and carry on talking, would we? Um, When we are aware of the presence of a king, it adjusts the way that we are in that person's company. And it's also reassuring that if God is king, if God is king of kings, it doesn't always depend on me. It doesn't all depend on us. There is a higher power. There is an everlasting to everlasting who holds all of this, who holds all of this, and who holds us in his hands. But you might be thinking to yourself, oh, hang on a minute, you're talking about a great king, and Joel's been talking to us about Jesus, man of the people, a man who used to hang around when he was here on the earth with people who nobody else actually chose to hang around with. I picked that picture on the screen. I've been using it with the young people over the last little while. Apparently, scientists, archaeologists, historians think that's what Jesus probably looked like. Um, I quite like it. I like it culturally. I like the expression on his face. I prefer it to some of those pictures of Jesus sometimes we have, you know, sort of a bit pale and looking. But Jesus, and and the Jesus that Joel's been presenting to us over the last months is a a man like us, a man who cooks and eats breakfast, a man who hangs out with people who, just ordinary people like you and I, who goes to weddings, who goes for dinner, who goes around to people's houses. He touches the untouchable. A woman one time comes and she pours perfume on his feet and she gets her hair and she dries all this perfume up on his feet. And as Richard was reminding us this morning, he washes people's feet. That doesn't sound very royal, does it? It doesn't sound like our idea of a king. But the amazing truth, the amazing truth for us to get our heads round and our hearts round today is that this same Jesus who did all of those things is also king. Check it out. 
Even before Jesus was born, the angels were talking about him reigning on throne forever. Jesus himself talked about a kingdom a lot. And if you talk about a kingdom, then it follows that there is a king. Um, in when he came in, do you remember the events of Palm Sunday? When he came in, it was said about him, here comes your king, but he's humble. He's not lording it over everybody. He's humble. He's coming to you, riding on a donkey. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and that theme of kingship runs all through what Jesus, how Jesus is described through the letters of Paul, through the teachings of Paul in the New Testament bit of our Bible. And I've chosen this just to pick up that point. It's a prayer that Paul prays. It feels important to pray something like this on, the, on um, Pentecost Sunday. Paul says this, he prays that the, hearts of your, the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance. Did you hear that, the riches? of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for all us who believe. His power shared with us the message of Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost is the day on which we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit, the church's birthday, if you like. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Difficult to imagine, isn't it? Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. That Jesus who walked with us, who was a man, who did things, who cried, who laughed, God with us is also this Jesus now, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything. You don't get much higher than that. And it's that combination of greatness, majesty, authority, with humility and care, which is so unique in our Jesus. I can't imagine, can you, Prince William, getting up one morning and thinking, do you know what, I'm a bit sick of all this, mm. all this luxury and royalty and, and people doing stuff for me. I think I'm going to chuck it all in and I'm going to go and live with homeless people under... Vauxhall Bridge in London for the rest of my life and beg for money and wonder where my next food is coming from and my next meal is coming from. Can't imagine anybody doing that and I don't say that by any means to disrespect them. It's just unimaginable. But another song that we know about sung by the early church reminds us that Jesus left all of that, all of that, left it all behind to humble himself to come and walk with us. I mean, wow. Wow. I think C.S. Lewis chose smartly when he um, chose to de depict his Jesus figure. If you've read those books or seen the film, The Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe, he chooses to de depict his Jesus figure as a lion, as Aslan. Maybe you've seen those films or read those books, and I think that's a really smart move. At the end, one of the children, I think it's Lucy, says about Aslan, is he tame? And the answer comes back, no, he's not tame, but he is good. And sometimes I think we want to tame God, don't we? We want to control God. We want to uh, have him where we can see him, sort of contain him, limit him. But God won't be contained. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. And if you, this seems a little bit um, other to you and a little bit out there, I'm going to give you four really quick W's to start on, really, really practical ways that might help you start to engage with God as King and King. Four W's. One, the world. If you look at, we've sung it this morning, if you look around at what God has made, it always lifts my eyes to think that God is bigger. 
You don't have to go far from your front yard to see stuff that makes you think, wow, God, you're amazing. Number two, witness. In the Psalms that were read, thank you, Anne, and thank you, Mary, there were a lot of times it says, come, let us talk together about God. Come, let's talk about what he has done. Recently in our fuse, groups, we, fuse group, we had a great evening where we just talked about the way our lives were different because God was in it. Okay, the way our lives were different because God was in them. And it just helps you lift your head from where you are and the things that are going on in your life to think about God being bigger. Witness. World. Worship. Thank you so much, Sam and Beth and Kev and Hannah, for leading us this morning, and LLE too. When we bring ourselves to worship, when we come to worship, we declare some things about God, which when we start to think of them, just feed back into our spirit and help us recognize who he is and who we are. It's such a reassuring place to be. Just any of those lines, if you took them away and started to think about them this morning, we've sung, you have no rival. You have no equal. Just think about that for a minute. God, you've got no rival. You've got no equal. So witness, the witness each other of what God has done. The world, worship, and then lastly, the word. However you read, scripture, Bible text, whatever you call it, whether you've got it on your phone, whether you've got it in a Bible at home, it all helps lift our minds from where we are to see who he is. There's a famous bit of film I'd love you to have a look at uh, f- together as, uh, as we move on. This is by a guy called Dr. Lockridge. Maybe you've seen it before, but this is a man just caught up with the greatness of Jesus. Thank you, guys. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I I wonder do you know him. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a well-trained of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is lighter. I wish I could describe him for you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him. But 
our king that's our king so maybe today's takeaway is for us to ask God to expand our view of Jesus to let him be bigger than we can hold or we can control as humans we love to be on top of things don't we we love to be in charge it's just that well, with God, we can't be. And as I was saying at the top of things, that's actually a really reassuring place to be. I think in 21st century Britain, it's all about us. It's all about what we can do and what we achieve and making things happen and making things work. But God is above all and in all. But maybe there's something else in this message for you. Maybe it's not just expanding your view of God, maybe lifting your head, but maybe also bowing the knee because when we see God as king, then surely it makes us respect and revere him. Old-fashioned words there. But maybe there's something else in this message for you because I've never been to Buckingham Palace. I know one person in this room who's been invited there. I've never been. Um, and the closest I would get to being part of all the Jubilee, Platinum Jubilee celebrations today would be to switch on my TV or to kind of gather with the crowds along the mall and just hope to get a little bit of a glimpse of the Queen and the future King and the Princes and all of the royalty. But our king, this king, throws a banquet and invites us all. Yeah. You're invited, I'm invited, everybody's invited. Not to watch at a distance, not to stand on your tiptoes and hope to get a peek. Not to stand in the wings or to get the leftovers after the event has happened. But to be his guest. You are invited. And in what I'm about to say, I mean absolutely no disrespect at all to the Queen. As far as I understand it, she's done as good a job in that role as it's possible for any human being to do. But if we were to meet her, she would have no idea really who we were, would she? But yet this King... The King of Kings, King Jesus, knows you by name. Anything she knew about you would be something that researchers had found out and had been prepped on her before she met with you. But this King knows all about you. He knows where you've been, where you're going. He knows what you do, what you say, what you think. He knows what fills you with joy, and he knows what fills you with sorrow. Our Queen apparently is a famously private person and gives very little away about herself, but this King invites us to know him just as he knows us. Our Queen might offer us a hand to shake and then she'd move on, but this King throws his arms wide and offers to love and hold us secure forever. She might give us a few moments of her time and then she'd need to move on. But this king invites us to walk with him and talk with him throughout our day, every day, from now and forever forward. She might want to talk with us. She might have invited us because of something that we have done. I noticed the list of honours uh, before the Jubilee. Something that we have done might have qualified us for an invitation. But this king 
This king is inviting you just because of you. Just because he wants to be with you. You are invited. You are invited by the king. You are invited by the king of kings. The king who was and is and is to come. And maybe today it's the first time you've heard an invitation like that. And maybe when I'm using the word invitation, um, you're not, it, it's a bit strange to think about. You've not received anything in, po- in, in the post. Nothing's arrived in your inbox. I think what I mean by an invitation, when I first heard it, when I was 12, it just felt like a little tug in my heart, that kind of invitation. That's the best way I can describe it. A little tug in my heart, a little something. That's what I mean by an invitation. Maybe today is the first time you've heard an invitation like that. Maybe it's today's the first time you might want to say yes to that. But in my experience, actually, God is always inviting us. It's not just a one-off, like it might be if we met the Queen. He's always inviting us. He's always inviting us maybe to leave behind something which isn't good in our lives, maybe to experience his love in a new way, maybe to experience his peace in a new way, maybe to hear his voice more clearly, maybe to know his power more intimately, maybe to know him more deeply. He's always inviting us. The king invites you. He invites me. He invites all of us. I'm going to pray just to finish, and then we're going to have our jubilee treat together but if anything that um, we've shared this morning resonates with you please stop and before you go have a chat with somebody about it i'll be at the front if you'd like to talk ask any questions no questions are out of bounds anything that you'd like to talk about or pray together Um, but let me just pray as we finish Lord God, on this Jubilee Day, um, I do thank you for the example of Queen Elizabeth and her long service, and we do pray that you would bless her. But Lord, as we are remembering her, I want to remember you, Lord God. I want to remember you, Jesus, as our King, as the King of Kings, the one who was and who is and who is forever. And yet, you did not hang on to all of your privilege, all that majesty, Lord. You chose, Jesus, to humble yourself and walk among us, to touch the untouchable, to heal, to restore, to bring freedom, to be God with us. And I don't have words to express that, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And God, we thank you today that as King of Kings, you don't hold yourself distant, but Lord God, you come near and you invite us, Lord. You invite us to be your guests. Thank you, Lord. And I pray, God, that as we hear your voice, we'd know how to respond how to say yes to those invitations. God, thank you that you're always inviting us, whether it's for the first time or whether to experience new depths of your power, your love, your peace, and your guidance. And Lord God, as we go from this place, I pray we know that we go with you, Lord God, King of Kings. Lord of Lords, our Jesus. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. So if you would hang around for a bit, we've got a special treat for you. Our young people, our children are coming to join us again in a few minutes. But if there's anything that we can pray for with you, um, I'm going to hang around the front with love um, to talk and chat some things over. Thank you. God bless. Have a great week. Thank you.